I'm thinking about making a series that will cover all the basics of shooting video with a mirrorless camera. From camera settings to nailing focus and best practices. And with this video, I thought I'd start this series off and give you an overview of the six things you need to check before you even hit record. And I have a little bonus tip at the end. Let's talk about it. Maybe you got your first mirrorless camera or you're starting to get into video after years of taking photos. Whatever the case may be, it can be a steep learning curve. But knowing the settings you need to check in the camera before you start shooting gives you more confidence and lets you focus more on the creative part of it. So, six things to check. Here we go. Number one, resolution. Before you shoot anything, it's good to think about the resolution you want to be shooting in. Resolution is the number of pixels each frame contains. The most common ones these days are 1920 by 1080, also referred to as 1080p or Full HD, and 3840 by 2160 or 4K UHD, with the latter being the highest resolution. Whether we pick 1080p or 4K really depends on if the final video is going to be shown on a phone or on a big 4K screen, but also on if we want to be able to zoom in in post-production without degrading image quality too much. It also depends on the type of storage we are using and the capacity of it. Shooting in 4K demands higher speeds of your SD cards and file sizes are much bigger than 1080p files. If your video is going to be watched on phones and tablets or even Full HD televisions, 1080p is good enough in most cases. And even though I usually shoot in 4K and upload in 4K to YouTube for better compression results, 1080p is good enough for most devices. So think about what resolution you need and check if you have your camera set accordingly. Number two, frame rate. There are many different frame rates available in many cameras these days, and picking one or the other can be for technical or creative reasons. Let's start with the technical side. You've probably heard of NTSC and PAL regions. These are standards for television and, in a very simplified manner, means a distinction between a 60Hz and 50Hz electricity grid. That means that shooting 23.976, 24 or 60 frames a second in a PAL region may cause problems when shooting with artificial lighting. You might end up with the lights flickering in your shots. And that's why I normally shoot in 25, 50 or 100 frames a second, because here in the Netherlands we use PAL. Whereas NTSC or 60 Hz is the standard in North America and people tend to shoot 24, 30, 60 and 120 frames per second. This doesn't mean that you can't use NTSC frame rates in power regions, especially when you're shooting outside, you won't see a difference. On the G86 we have the option to set the system frequency to 50 or 60 Hz. I have it set to 50 Hz. The G9 doesn't have a system frequency setting, so we can pick whichever frame rate we want easily. We can shoot 50 frames per second and switch over to 60 frames a second, just like that. The decision for a frame rate can also be a creative one, and we can basically pick whatever we like, but there are some basic principles. First off, 23.976, 24 and 25 frames a second, are considered to be the most natural to our eyes. It has a certain motion blur and motion cadence to it that we're used to seeing and most of us perceive as natural. It is also the frame rate most movies are shot in. 30 frames per second is usually used for streaming and television, but it is also sometimes preferred over 24 or 25 frames per second by some people. It has less motion blur and is sometimes considered as looking hyper real. For me personally, I never shoot 30 frames a second except when I'm streaming. The higher frame rates, 50, 60, 100, 120 or even higher, are generally meant to be slowed down in post to create slow motion. These frame rates hardly show any motion blur and if not slowed down can look a bit jerky. As I said, you can use whatever frame rate you want, 
just try different ones and see what you prefer. It does, however, also affect your exposure. I'll get to that in a bit. Number three, shutter speed. Shutter speed is the amount of time that each frame is exposed to light, measured either in fractions of a second or with an angle. Unlike with photography, where we use shutter speed as a tool to set exposure or to freeze motion in an image, in video, we hardly ever change the shutter speed. That's mainly because of the effect it has on motion blur. Typically, we set our shutter speed to double the frame rate we shoot in. That's the rule of thumb. So for instance, if we shoot in 25 frames per second, we set our shutter speed to 1 50th of a second. And with 50 frames per second, we set it to 100th of a second. If the camera has shutter angle, we typically set it to 180 degrees in any frame rate, which gives us the same result as setting the shutter speed to double the frame rate. This way, the effect of shutter speed on motion blur is always in proportion to the frame rate we're shooting in. So shutter speed or angle and frame rate go hand in hand, and therefore the higher the frame rate, the higher the shutter speed, which in turn means the higher the frame rate and shutter speed, the darker the image will get, and you'll need to compensate for that. Number four, exposure. Exposure is one of the most important things to check. It makes or breaks our image. When an image is overexposed, it means that in the lightest areas of our image, we lose information, which results in these being completely white without any detail. Underexposing, on the other hand, means that the darkest parts of our image will be completely black and all detail will be lost. With video, we can control exposure by adjusting aperture, ISO, and with a variable ND filter or an ND filter in general. To a certain extent, you can use shutter speed or angle as well, but it's very limited. I'll sometimes increase my shutter angle for a bit more light, but only if there isn't much movement in the frame. Otherwise, it's going to look very blurry. So how do we judge exposure? There are several tools available. Zebras, the exposure meter, false color, waveform, and luminance spot meter. Personally, I almost exclusively use waveform, and I will sometimes use the luminance spot meter. I didn't mention histogram in this list because in my opinion, it is not a very useful tool because it doesn't tell you anything about how the exposure is distributed across our image. Make sure to use the available tools to check exposure. Number five, white balance. When we have white balance properly set, simply put, it means that whatever is white in real life appears white in the image, ensuring that all the other colors will also be accurate. It's important to set a proper white balance especially when we're shooting in a Rec. 709 co color profile, such as the natural profile, because there won't be much room for correction in post. White balance can be set in a number of ways. We can set it to automatic and let the camera decide, which I don't recommend. We can dial in a specific color temperature, or we can set a custom white balance with the help of a gray card. Keep in mind that you may need to set white balance again when lighting conditions change. Number six, audio levels. This might be the most overlooked and underrated part of shooting video. Most of the time, we also want to capture audio of whatever we're shooting. It's actually crucial for a good video, at least in my opinion. There are ways we can make sure we capture good audio like using an external microphone instead of the camera's built-in mic and using a good shock mount for that microphone. But we also need to keep an eye on what's happening with that audio in the camera. First of all, monitor your audio. There are audio meters on screen, and if not, you can turn them on in the menu. Generally speaking, for dialogue, we want the audio levels between minus 12 and minus 6 dB on average, and nothing above 0 dB. Anything over 0 dB will be clipped and lost. Ideally, we also monitor the audio with a pair of headphones. 
That way you can hear if the audio actually sounds good and there aren't any problems. There are also some settings to help us manage the audio. One of which is wind noise reduction. This is basically a low cut filter applied in camera. I wouldn't recommend using this as we can easily apply the same thing in post. But if you have no other option, it's there. Another thing is the limiter. Turning this on basically means that any audio over or approaching 0 dB will be pushed down. This sounds great, right? No more worrying about clipping audio. Well, not really. It can be helpful if you're expecting lots of unexpected loud noises, but it distorts the audio. It isn't going to sound very good. So it's better to set our levels right, monitor the audio and adjust if necessary. And then the bonus tip, color profile. Color profiles determine how our image will look in terms of, well, colors. So we need to pick one before we start recording. We can't change it after the fact, unless we're shooting raw, but that's a whole nother topic. We have different color profiles at our disposal. Most of them, like Natural, Standard or Cinelite D, are Rec. 709 and meant to look good straight out of camera without much room to adjust colors and exposure in post. These are good profiles to pick if you're not into color grading much or you have no time to do anything in post. On most Lumix cameras, we can also shoot in Vlog. This profile gives us more dynamic range and lots of room to color grade our footage in post. But it also requires that work. It doesn't look good straight out of camera. Try the different profiles and see which one you prefer and suit your needs. Now you can hit record. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I hope this video was helpful. If so, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel and maybe hit that notification bell. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. This sounds great, right? No more worrying, 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 no more worrying.